Let, let me ask you how uh, trading has kicked off in the first quarter. I mean, we're deep into it now, and you obviously did uh, well in the last quarter. What's, what does it look like uh, right now? Well, Matt, as you know, I, I, I can't speak to the first quarter itself, but let me just uh, make two points. One, uh, as you noted, um, the diversified model that we have of an investment bank in a strong consumer franchise, I think, showed its value in 2020. And the IB had very strong uh, quarters, four quarters in a row, particularly in the markets business. The second point I would make that I think people need to focus on is uh, the size of the overall capital markets, the, the size of the value of equities, the, uh, uh, the value of debt that's in the market, both sovereign and corporate, has doubled in the last 10 years. And in fact, the corporate bond market in the last two years has grown by 40%. And so the pool of activity around the capital markets, it's not, you know, sort of a one point in time, but rather the markets have grown significantly, and we as a major participant in that market will benefit from it. So uh, I think there's more consistency to the investment banking uh, uh, results than, than some people might speculate. It's great to get that view. Um Although on the, on, the, on the trading front, it seems like there has been real volatility. And that's why I ask about the first quarter. I don't need to know um, specifics, but do you expect volume, trading volumes to kind of normalize this year? You know, I, I don't think we're going back to the trading volumes that we saw in 2017, 2018, precisely because the market is so much bigger. Uh, and a lot of market capacity has left, to be quite frank. So the results that you saw from us in the last four quarters uh, of 2020 were both a function of the markets being larger, for sure there was heightened uh, volatility, but also we gained market share uh, across almost all the asset classes. So um, uh, uh, as, as you know, we've invested in our investment bank for the last uh, five years, and I, think, uh, and I think last year has started to pay uh, real dividends and allowed us to be profitable every quarter. And then, as you noted, uh, announced a 700 million pound buyback plus a one pence per share uh, dividend as our first capital return in over a year. Is this a sign, Jess, that you expect a full recovery this year? I mean, do you see us coming out of the pandemic on a strong trajectory? I do. Um, uh, you know, normally in a recession, what you see in terms of consumer behavior is the consumer will borrow a little bit more to maintain a certain lifestyle uh, and use a little bit more of their cash. In this pandemic, what really underscored the reaction of the consumer was fear, understandably so. And so what the consumer has done is, is shored up their balance sheet by, by repaying debt. So our overall balances in our credit card portfolio is down quite significantly in the U.K. as well as in the U.S. and build up their assets by, uh, by, by, by placing money on deposit with banks. And so our deposit base has grown a lot. I think it's fair to say that that buildup in deposit is pent up demand that when the pandemic is in fact behind us and we can start to go to restaurants again and stores again, uh, uh, those reserves will be used and I think you'll have a quite a robust recovery in the economy. Can I ask you about the um, trajectory of cost cuts? Uh, for one thing, you paused job cuts during the pandemic. So are you going to be restarting them? You know, uh, uh, we gave ourselves three priorities when the pandemic really hit. One was to preserve the financial stability of the bank, and I think we've done that. Secondly was to uh, help our consumers uh, and, our, and our customers around the world, particularly in the U.K. And, you know, we underwrote one and a half trillion uh, pounds of debt. We participated in 25 billion pounds of government programs for small businesses and, and mid-corporates. Um, uh, so, and then we wanted to help our colleagues. Uh, and so you're right, you know, we, we employ some 85,000 people and we've kept that consistent during, uh, during, the, uh, during the pandemic. Um, you know, we're investing now to grow the top line. Uh, uh, the, the days of restructuring at Barclays are over. 
Um, uh, so we have a lot of talented people. We have a lot of places where, where we want to invest our money. We are, we are rapidly um, uh, building out our digital bank, um, uh, particularly on the consumer footprint. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're not going to see a major restructuring from the bank in terms of cutting costs. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to be prudent. We're going to manage our costs efficiently. Uh, but we want to invest in the future of, of the bank. Let me ask you about Bitcoin, which is kind of weird, but I guess it's more a more normal question lately. We've had other b banks weigh in um, or consider it, and you've been throughout my career on the avant-garde, on the cutting edge of things. What do you think about the digital currency slash commodity? I think everyone has got to think hard about where cryptocurrency is, is going. Uh, uh, it is a new phenomenon in, uh, in the financial markets. Uh, it's, I doubt it's going to go away. But I also think, you know, uh, central banks will not lose control of their monetary policy, i.e. their currency. So uh, I think it'll have a role, but I think it will be limited. And, and will Barclays start to embrace it in terms of accepting it, in terms of helping investors uh, 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 get access to it? You know, uh, 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 we haven't made that move yet. Um, I, I think we're going to be cautious around cryptocurrencies. Uh, uh, you know, but that being said, we are a major player in the global financial markets. And if that is a financial asset that begins to attract more attention, Barclays will have to look at it for sure. Jess, let me just finally ask you about the negative rates discussion in London uh, at the Bank of England. What do you expect them to do, and um, what's your view on how that would affect the industry? So uh, I think uh, uh, what uh, what Governor Bailey's doing is 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 prudent. You know, the financial industry needs to be prepared. So if that is an instrument that's used, we can uh, uh, we can manage to it. I think it's very unlikely the UK goes into negative interest rates. In fact, if you look at at the sterling market right now, interest rates are going up, not down. Uh, uh, so I think that as we see the other side of the pandemic and the economic growth that we will, uh, that we will realize, uh, uh, I think interest rates, if they move, will be moving up, not down.